If you're using create react app, just add the proxy to your package.json. If you're using parcel, just create a proxy RP with your proxy in it. And if you're using Vite, just add the proxy to your Vite config file. And that's it. That's how you proxy your requests to your backend API in development and avoid those cause issues. Now stick around for the rest of the video if you want a more in-depth explanation on how to proxy your API requests. So let's say you have a server-side app that could be in any language or framework. I'm going to use Express. And this server allows users to get a list of all users. Okay. Thank you, Copilot. So our app literally just responds with users and we should probably put IDs in here. And we just can pretend this is a real app and this data is coming from a real database. But right now we have a server that returns a list of users. So if I go to my browser and open up localhost 8080 slash users, we should be able to see that list of users. There they are. So that all works great. And then you have your front end app. And in this case, I'm using Vite, but the tool chain doesn't matter that much. And this app is going to need to display that list of users. So we'll need some state for the users. And then we'll need to actually display those users somehow. That looks fine. Are those the same details, name and email? No, it didn't have an email. It had an age. Come on, Copilot. And I'm going to add a little title in here. Let's call this our user app. And we should be able to see this in the browser too at localhost 5173 for some reason. So let's take a look at that. And there is the user app, but we can't see any users because right now it's just that empty array, but that's fine. But now we need to make sure that we actually load that list of users from the server when our application loads. So I'm gonna add in a use effect here. And when this happens, we're gonna do an Axios request. I guess I should import Axios. And we are going to get our users from the server. And remember, the server is running on port 8080 and it's localhost. So I'm going to need to go HTTP uh, localhost port 8080 slash users. Perfect. Then once that's done, we'll set the users to be the data that comes back. If there's an error, let's console log it. I don't need to finally come on. And that's it. So when this app loads, we should go grab those users that we know already works that will give us an array that we should render into a list of users. So let's refresh this page and nothing happens. So let's take a look at the console and oh my cause we've been blocked. And at this moment, you might be wondering what is cause? So if we check this out, we get a bunch of documentation, but cause is something we only have to think about when the origin of an HTTP request is different than the origin of the location the request is being made. What the hell are you talking about? And an origin is the scheme, in this case we're using HTTP, the domain, in this case localhost, and the port, and in this case the server has 8080, and the client has 517 something, I don't remember, 5173, okay. So although the scheme and the domain are the exact same in this case, the port is different and that makes it a different origin. The React app is being served up on a different origin than the server, than the API. And when my React app tries to make a request to my backend API, that isn't allowed. The browser isn't gonna allow that unless my server-side code says, yeah, that's totally fine. A request from localhost 5173 is cool with me. Browser, let this request happen. Unless the server does that, the browser just isn't gonna let it happen. So we have this cause issue. And you might try and fix this issue by going down a cause rabbit hole where you go to your server and you try and add cause middleware. And you might end up doing something like that to allow requests from any front end, or you might actually specify localhost 5173 or localhost 3000 more likely. But before we do anything like this, we really need to step back and think about how our front end and our back end are gonna work together and how they're gonna communicate 
in our production environment. Because my backend is an express app and in development, it runs on port 8080 on localhost using Nodemon. But in production, it's not gonna run on localhost. It's gonna run somewhere on the internet and I'm probably gonna access it with a real domain like whateverdomain.com. My React app is running on port 5173 and should probably be running on port 3000 because I have a development server set up through Vite and any tool chain that you use with a React app is gonna serve up your React app through some development server. But this is just for development. This isn't how your app is gonna work in production. We don't use the dev server, we don't use port 3000, we just have to get the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that is your React app onto the internet somehow. Vite and all the other special tooling goes away in production. And there's many ways of hosting these front-end static assets, but one plan is just to build the front-end application into the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, copy those files onto the server, and just have your server serve those up to your users. So in this case, I would just have my Express app serve my React static files. So if I go to myapp.com in the browser, I'll get my React app static files. But if I go to myapp.com slash users in this case, I would get this JSON response. So most of my responses are gonna be JSON responses, but if I just make a request to the root, I should serve my React app. But to make the difference between my JSON API endpoints and my React app more clear, I'll probably do something like put slash API in front of anything that is part of my JSON API. So the root is just for my React app and then slash API is my JSON API. And this is a pretty simple way of deploying a React app because in the end you only have to deploy one thing. You just deploy your server with all of the static React assets as part of your server. And a nice side effect of this is that we don't have to deal with cores anymore because we're always gonna have the same origin. We're just hosting one app, we'll have one domain name, and the origin will be the same for the React app and for the JSON API. And at the end of this video, I'll show you how to actually deploy this to Railway using this technique, but let's get back to the React app. So I know I'm gonna be serving this React app from the same origin as my server. And when I do that, I don't need to specify any of the origin stuff. If this is on the same server, I can just say go to slash users. It's gonna be the same origin slash users and actually it should be slash API slash users in this case. And if I go and reload this page again, I'm gonna get a different error message, which is 404 not found because slash API slash users doesn't exist on my React app dev server. And that's because it's searching for slash API slash users on my React app dev server instead of my Express app. And in production, I have a plan for this. I'm gonna make sure that my React app is served from my Express app. But in development, I need a different plan to kind of mimic this behavior while keeping my React app development server separate from my Express app server. So my plan is basically gonna to be to trick the browser into thinking that these two apps are on the same server. So if I make a request to slash API slash users, Although it's gonna to go to my Express app, which has a different origin, I want the browser to think that it's the same origin as my React app dev server. And in a Vite application, I just have to find the vite.config.js and add a server parameter here, which has a proxy parameter, which has slash API, which is gonna to forward to localhost 8080 because that's my express server. And this is the simplest way of using the Vite proxy. You can get way more fancy, you can use regular expressions and do a whole bunch of other things. But this is all I need and all it's saying is any request that starts with slash API, that should be forwarded to localhost 8080, which is my express app. But the browser is gonna think that it's still part of my React app, that they're still the same origin, but behind the scenes, we're gonna forward everything onto the Express app. And if you're using create React app, then you just open up your package.json and you add proxy and then where you're proxying to. So in this case, localhost 8080. If you're using parcel, you can create a dot proxy RC file and just dump in this bit of code right here. It really doesn't matter what your tool chain is, you'll most likely have a way of creating a proxy to your backend. And I'll leave some links to the documentation in the description of this video. So what this means is that in my React code, I get to write code like this, where I just make requests as if they're on the same origin. Slash API slash users is gonna go to my Express server at a different origin, 
but the browser is going to think they're the same origin in development and then in production i'm just going to make sure they're the same origin so now if i go back and refresh this page it's not going to work and i think that's because when i change something in my Vite config i might have to restart the server so let's try this again refresh uh, and there we go i have my application and here are my users coming from my api and if i clear this real quick and then refresh the app I should see that when I make a request to slash API slash users, my browser thinks that I'm making that request to my React Apps dev server, but really it's being forwarded to my Express app and I'm getting my Express Apps response here. And I can prove this by modifying this just a little bit. Let's see if we can add another user in here. Is Copilot gonna help me? ID three, Jack Doe, age 28. Done, okay. So I've updated my backend server, my express server running on port 8080, but this should still work just as if it was part of my front end app because we're forwarding all the requests that start with slash API to my express app. So no more cause issues and I get to write my requests as they will appear in production. So I get to omit that origin completely, which is really nice. So this is working in development, but let's see how we actually make this work in production. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos like this one. The first thing we need to do when we want to deploy a React app is actually build that app. So we're not gonna use the dev server anymore. We're gonna run yarn build to build this down into its HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files that we can actually deploy with our server. And once we do that, we should get this little dist folder here, which has the index.html and any other assets that we need. So I'm gonna just take this dist folder from my front end React repo and copy this straight into my Express backend here. So my Express app now has this dist folder. Then in my server.js, I'm gonna remove this fake path here and I'm gonna say app.useExpress.static uh, and this is gonna be the dist folder. So now a request that comes in to slash index or just slash in this case, will serve up the React app. So we could test this by opening up localhost 8080. I know that if I go to slash API slash users, I'll get that array of users. But if I just go to localhost 8080, which is my express application, I should see my React app being presented here. And this isn't the JSX and all the stuff in apps.jsx or anything like that. It is just that dist folder, just what was compiled when I ran yarn build. So if I make any changes in app.jsx, if I uh, add a few more P's here, uh, this won't appear in my express version of the application because this will only get what I've built at that time. So if I made a change to my front end and I wanna be able to see that in production on my express app, I would have to go and rebuild my front end application and then delete the current version of dist and recopy dist into my back end like that. And now I'll see those updates on my express server. So this is important because this is the thing that's gonna be deployed into production. I still have this on localhost, but now we can actually deploy this to the internet as one single application, just an express app that we're deploying. I'm gonna deploy this app using Railway. And before I do that, I'm gonna set this up as a GitHub repo, user app for YouTube video. I'm gonna make this private because I'm probably gonna delete this after, but I'm gonna create a GitHub repo for this. Uh, and then I'm going to add this as a repo. So I'll go over to my backend here, git init, add a git ignore, git add everything, git commit a stupid message, add my origin, git push dash u origin master. Okay, so my app should now be on GitHub and it doesn't contain my dist folder. Why doesn't it contain my dist folder? Did I put dist in my git ignore? Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay, well, let's get rid of that. Uh, stupid commit message again. Okay, now I should have, there we go, my entire Express app with that dist folder, which means that if I deploy this to something like Railway, which I'm gonna do right now, deploy from GitHub repo, it should have everything in there. 
there's my user app deploy now that looks like it was successfully deployed so if we go to settings generate a domain real quick then this should be the app in a moment when it actually finishes deploying there we go so there is the entire app all I have to do is deploy my express app and if I go to the root of that I will get my react application but if I went to something like uh, slash API slash users, I'll see the JSON API. So I have my React app and my JSON API as one Express application that I can now deploy anywhere. And there are many ways to deploy a React app. This is not the standard way, it isn't a suggested way, it's just one of many ways. But if this happens to be your plan for deploying your React app, to proxy your API requests is a really nice feature that your toolchain has.